This question wants us to compare the boiling point of butane with butanoic acid. So what I would always say is draw butane, draw two butane molecules. So that's just a four carbon with hydrogens, of course. Draw another one, because remember, when you are looking at intermolecular forces, you are looking at the forces needed to separate these molecules from each other, okay? You're not trying to break those bonds. That's not what we're doing when we boil something. So there's butane. And now let me do butanoic acid. So, so that's going to be one little container. You can imagine like a big container filled with millions of those molecules. Now we're going to quickly look at butanoic acid. So I always like to draw two of them. You can draw 55 if you wanted to. Might just take a lot of time. Let's draw that a little bit better. So we know that it's got that. Let's actually draw it upside down. And then this one I'll draw the normal way, just so we can have a look at we can have a look quite nicely. Okay, so there's two butanoic acid molecules, and of course there's gonna be hydrogens everywhere. Okay, and I should go put those all in, but I'm just saving some time. You guys know about that. So there are three main intermolecular forces that we look at. That is London forces. And that is whenever you have nonpolar parts, nonpolar, which is pretty much when you have hydrogens and carbons. So for example, this part here is a nonpolar part. This is a nonpolar. That's of course nonpolar. Um, that's nonpolar. So it's any part that has carbon and hydrogen pretty much. That is your nonpolar part. Okay. Then you get dipole dipole which is where you have something like a carbon connected to an oxygen or a double bond oxygen. Um, those are all dipole dipole parts. And even oxygen connected to hydrogen. I know that that's also um, hydrogen bonding, but it's technically also dipole dipole, okay? Because that's a polar part. Now, hydrogen bonding, the strongest, is specifically when you have hydrogen connected to either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Okay, so let me explain to you guys the basics of how we can see which of these has a higher boiling point, and then I'll show you what to write in a test. So can you see that this molecule here is completely, it's only carbon and hydrogen, okay? So that's nonpolar. So the only intermolecular force that you are going to see here is going to be London forces. Now, London forces are the weakest forces that we get for intermolecular forces, okay? If you come down to butanoic acid, it's got different things. This part here is exactly the same as the butanoic acid. This part here is only going to have London forces, okay? Because that part there is carbons and hydrogens only. Then if you look here, you see how we're getting these like carbon double bond bonds, for example. That's going to be, um, and even over here, you see there's a carbon bonded to an oxygen, which is like that. Um, all of those areas, that's all just dipole dipole. Okay. And then when you've got your, oh, whoops, let me get a better color. So when you've got OHs like that, then in between there, you're going to get some hydrogen bonding. And over here, this blue part, that was your dipole dipole. So you see that carboxylic acids have a little bit of everything. So the forces in between the carboxylic acid will end up being much stronger than the forces in between the butane so it will be more difficult to separate butanoic acid molecules from each other. So we would expect that the boiling point is going to be much higher for butanoic acid because more energy is required. Okay, so let's go put that into a formal writing now. So what you do is you break it up into four steps. Step one 
just take the first molecule, which is butane, and just mention what type of intermolecular forces you can see. So we could say butane contains London forces between its molecules. Okay, uh, we could then say that butanoic acid contains London forces between the alkyl, which is the carbon-hydrogen part, um, sections. Then we could say it's got dipole, dipole forces. Some teachers wouldn't expect you to give all of these. They would only expect you to mention the most dominant ones. So they would only expect you to mention the hydrogen bonding, okay? So if your teacher does that, then fine. I'm just giving you the most complete answer so that you have the fullest and deepest understanding, okay? So dipole-dipole forces, it contains dipole-dipole forces between um, the permanent dipoles of... Um, C O bonds, um, C double bond oxygen, and even the OH um, bonds, okay? And then we could say that it's got hydrogen bonding between the OH, or your teacher might call it the hydroxyl. That's what OH means, hydroxyl um, sections. Okay, and your teacher might call this the carbonyl section, for example. So I'm not, I mean, every single school is different. And so I'm not going to give you like one answer and expect that. But I'm, what I'm teaching you is understanding so that you can adapt to whatever your teacher is saying, but you'll have a much deeper understanding of what they mean. Okay, um, now we've done one, two steps. You need to come up with four. So for the third one, you just come, you make like a comparison. So you can say that um, dipole dipole forces and hydrogen bonding is stronger than London forces. Step four is where you make your conclusion. You say, therefore, more energy will be needed, I'm really going to run out of space here, needed to overcome the forces of attraction in butanoic acid. Okay, now we need to add a little part, a little extra part, so I'm going to erase all of this, if you don't mind. Let's carry on here. Therefore, butanoic acid will have a larger boiling point than um, butanoic acid will have a larger boiling point than butane.